greatest warriors of our Indo-European ancestors dressed in wolf skins, or that of other frightening animals, and acted with a ferocity that matched those animals. We have stories of the Nordic berserkers, the Greek Achilles during the Iliad, and Kukelin in the Tornbo Kolia. But what was going on for them to act like this? Hi, I'm John White, specialist in Indo-European mythology, and today I'm going to look at the rage that Homer called Lissa, a term which means either martial fury or rabid, but a term that could be applied to wolf-skinned warriors and the like. So what was going on here? Why did these people act possessed by the animals whose skin they were wearing? Well, come with me as we journey through Greek, North and Iranian mythology to find out why some of the ancient heroes took this form and to understand what Lysa really is. So grab yourself a cup of tea and welcome to Crack and Falls. So where's the best place to start to find out what Lysa is? Well, if it occurs in Homer's Iliad, then that's a good place to start. And it appears in there three times. And each time the warrior feels all powerful and unconquerable. And I'll read the three short passages so you have an understanding of how the Greeks viewed this. Hector, exulting greatly in his might, rages vehemently. Relying of Zeus and holding no one in respect, neither man nor gods, and the powerful Lysa has entered him. And a short while later in the book, we see it again. For now you might take Hector, as he would come very near to you, possessing deadly Lysa, and he thinks that not one of the Danans, whom the ships brought hither, is like unto himself. Finally we see it when Achilles is in front of Troy. Thus Priam spoke, and they loosened the gates and thrust back the bolts, and the gates spreading produced light. Now Apollo himself sprang forth in order to ward off destruction from the Trojans, and straight into the high-walled city, rough in the throat with thirst, and dusty from the plain, they fled. Achilles followed impetuously with his spear, and powerful Lysa unrelentingly possessed his heart. So even though these were probably the strongest characters in the story, we see that when possessed with this Lysa, they were willing to fight anyone. But there's also this confusion on whether the person involved is in possession of Lysa or whether the Lysa is in possession of the person. In effect, there is some ambiguity in whether only skilled warriors can possess such a rage or equally whether the rage possesses the warrior. And this type of rage is seen amongst a number of Indo-European stories. And perhaps one of the most obvious examples of this is the description of berserkers experiencing the fury the Germanic Vut, with a clear view from the Ninga Saga, chapter 6, with a passage that reads, They went without shields, and were made as dogs or wolves, and bit on their shields. And they were strong as bears or bulls, men they slew, and neither far nor still would deal with them. And this is what is called the fury of the berserker. The Celts also recognise this state of fury, a state they called Ferg, and it is seen most clearly in the great Irish hero Cú Cúlain within the Torn Bó A charioteer relates a dream to his master, in which he talks of Cú and his rage making him seem like a hound. There's a skilled hound at the helm, a fine chariot warrior, a wild hawk hurrying his horses southward. Surely it is Corcoulain's chariot horse is coming, who says he is not coming to our defeat. I had a dream last year. Whoever at the time appointed opposes the hound on the slope, let him beware. The hound of Vimein Bacha, in all his different shapes, the hound of plunder and battle, I hear him, and he hears. And over in Iran, this fury had the name Isma, and as most cruel or aggressive things were, it was condemned by Zarathustra. However, some descriptions will remain, especially with regard to the god representing the aggressive victory, the Reoriaranya. Mithra, lord of wide pastures, we worship in front of whom flies Athura created Reoriaranya, in the shape of a wild, aggressive male boar with sharp fangs and sharp tusks, a boar that kills at one blow, his unapproachable, grim, speckled faced and strong, iron of foot, iron of hand with iron tendons iron tail and iron jaws as he catches up with opponents beset by passion simultaneously by manly valour he knocks them down with a toss he does not even think he has struck 
nor has he the impression he is hitting anybody until he has smashed even the vertebrae, the pillars of life, even the vertebrae, the springs of vitality. Now, all these passages I've read may seem to have their differences, and that is expected, but they also have something in common, or well, many things in common. The most obvious is that the warrior, in their furious rage, is depicted as a wild beast. And not just depicted, there is an indication that they are acting like a wild beast. The Norse word berserker literally means those of the bear shirt, and the Ulfhedna means those of the wolf's head. And these warriors dressed and acted as bears and wolves. Kukulain was felt to be a menacing hound in battle. The first syllable of his name, Ku, actually means hound, and the Iranian Re or Reina means a raging boar, although he was known to take up to 10 different forms, and Heracles in Hesiod's description of him was also known as a raging boar. And so what we have are warriors who are masquerading as bears and wolves and boars and hounds and all these forms taken up by the Indo-European warriors used pelts and specially designed helmets resembling the animal's head. And we also have evidence that lions and foxes and rams and stallions may have also played a role in this possession. And so, what was going on? Well, what is going on is that you haven't hit the like and subscribe button. that are free to use and help this channel out so much if you press them. So that would be great, thank you. But what really was going on? Well, why were there warriors having these wolfish rages? Well, of all the powerful and carnivorous animals chosen, it is the wolf that seems to have been the most important for the Indo-European warriors. Reflexes, the old word for wolf, which is wulko, are found in literally hundreds of proper names and numerous peoples such as the Luvians, the Lycians, the Hippinis, the uh, Lucerys, the Dacians, the Hycanians, and the Saka Humavaka. And all these are names that tell us that peoples are associated with wolves. Why are wolves popular? And why were there so many stories of lycanthropy among the Greeks and Romans, Germans and Celts, Anatolians and Iranians? All seemingly traced back to the warrior practices I've mentioned here. Well, the ideology seems straightforward and primitive. If one wears the skin of the wolf, one takes on the role of the wolf. Wild, ravenous, raging and out of control. But it wasn't that simple. And we see this in practice if we go back to the Iliad and where the mission of Dolon, where Dolon is said to have put on as a covering the skin of a greyish wolf. But we see, however, that the wolf skin here does not transform Dolon directly. It just allows him to feel as though he is a wolf, but he lacks the rage. And this makes sense as in the Iliad, Dolon isn't described as the greatest of warriors. He is at best described as um, swift of foot. And he quickly panics when Odysseus and the Diomedes attack him and kill him. The wearing of the wolfskin has aided him little as he is not able to take on this Lysa, this animal rage, and with it what would have made him invincible. And this is because in all these stories with this special rage associated with the animal form, it is only accessible to the greatest of heroes. And it is this rage that is known as Esma or Ferg or v or as we started out in this journey known as Lysa. It is this that is known as Wolfy Drage or Furor, a term derived from Lycos or Wolf, and harking back to a very ancient Indo-European warrior practice. But whilst Lysa means fury, I also suggested at the very beginning it means rabid. And we should know that this word is only used to describe this illness in dogs or horses, but never in wolves. And the reason is that wolfish rage it's not a disease of the wolf, it is their nature, this is how they are, and that is their inherent manner. These heroes have to take on these Lysa. And that is what it was. So I hope you enjoy that journey into these wolf warriors and berserkers. I'll talk more about the honour of such warriors in this video that has been recommended to you somewhere on the screen, um, which is based on a story from the old Icelandic sagas. And so, until the next time we meet and talk, please stay safe and stay well. This was quick and forward.